Steve's favorite animal was a crocodile. I'm sorry, Big Joe. Come on now. I'm going to keep your legs up. Come on, tickle, tickle. Here you go. There's my boy. When Steve started studying crocodiles back in the 1980s, their numbers were really doing it tough. Crocodiles had been shot and hunted for their skins. So he spent about half the year, every year, on his own in the bush, catching them and trying to help them. Steve was passionate about protecting these animals. All of us in the Australia Zoo Crocodile Rescue Team are dedicated to doing what we can to learn more about these modern day dinosaurs. Sit on a dance. Yeah, I will. The research Steve started needs to continue because saltwater crocodiles are still classed as vulnerable. So every single year for an entire month, Bindi, Robert and I head north to research and study crocodiles and to help manage crocodiles coming into conflict with people. Not only do I feel this sense of curiosity and discovery, I feel a sense of urgency as well. Irwin Wildlife Reserve came to be after Steve had his accident in 2006. This beautiful property used to be a cattle station, so the lease was purchased by the government, and we were able to open this as a nature reserve. This incredible wilderness area is the size of the city of Chicago and New York combined. 335,000 acres of government protected land. Stacks of crops, stacks of wildlife. We've been coming here for decades. First time I came to Cape York with Steve was 25 years ago. Steve was completely at home in the bush. And to me, this was the mystical faraway land. Oh, Look, here's another oh, one. Right. <gasps> here's yeah, another yeah, one. one. That one's okay. You better be really thorough with that next I am. I am. That's it. I've reached the bottom of the cavity. You just let him go right here. My first time catching a crocodile was what was actually the last croc trip we had with Dad. Hey, thank you for helping me. You're a good help. And maybe next croc you could help me with the knots and do some good croc knots with the ropes. I can. Good, good, good. And since then, this crocodile research has become one of my biggest passions in life. Yeah. Let's go set some more traps and catch more crocs tomorrow, will we? Yeah. Hey, come on. I first started doing crocodile research work before I can remember. Bindi, get that tail. I wanted to be just like Dad, so the more I could watch him, the more excited I became. My dad truly made me feel like I was a third generation crocodile hunter, and that makes me feel so proud. Our mission this year is to catch new crocodiles to track. We also want to recapture old friends so we can catch up on how they're doing. What are you most looking forward to? Being with you guys. Oh! My primary role on croc trips is helping out on the science side of things, and I absolutely love it. I just can't wait to get straight into trapping and catching crocodiles. I really want to learn the capture techniques that Dad originally used. All of that, I'm just so excited to get back out on the river. And just... For me, there's nothing I love more than jumping the croc. Okay, so I gotta tell you, my first croc catching yes. memory. Your dad and I just got married in Oregon. And then we got a phone call. Some bad guy was trying to kill some crocodiles in a river in Australia. So Steve said, do you want to have a honeymoon or do you want to go back and try to save these crocs? We were sadly unable to get to the big male crocodile before the bad guy shot it. This is such a waste. Bullet all straight to the brain. Oh, he was shot dead. Now he's lost. 
gone forever. A real shame. If we can convince people to love and want to protect crocodiles, then we will be definitely honoring what your dad tried to do. Without these creatures, we're all going to lose. There'll be no mud crabs and no fish left. We must protect them. Professor Craig Franklin is from the University of Queensland and has been working with us for 15 years or so now. So it's about that long to cut. Mm -hmm. He helps us organize programs for visiting researchers and ensures that we get follow-up published papers on any work being done here. He feels like family and he's just been a huge part of my life. I might have burnt my eyes when you put the actual... Yeah. Is that okay? Cindy has been helping me now for a long time. This is great information. Thank you very, very much. And I've seen her grow from a six-year-old girl to this well-organised, efficient and professional assistant. Well, let's, let's quickly check. I'm just going to check in here for my question. The first thing we need to do is to determine whether this is a new animal or a recapture, an animal that we have caught previously. I've felt all throughout the tail and there's no code that I can detect. Uh, this is a new animal that we have here. We've got to determine whether it's a boy or a girl. And it's a boy. Yay! Yay. So we're going to take the measurements and then if we recapture him, it'll give us really interesting information on how much he's grown over the years. Nine foot one. Got it? Then we collect blood and tissue samples. OK. This allows us to look at what the animal has been feeding upon and where it's been feeding. This little crocodile can hardly even feel what we're doing when we're taking these tiny tissue samples. Now it's time for us to insert an acoustic tracker under the crocodile's skin. And we place an acoustic tracker on every single one of our crocodiles. The area is completely numb, so our little crocodile doesn't even notice that it's there and she won't even be able to feel this at all. With every new crocodile, they need a name. And I have an idea for a pretty special name for this one. So, Craig, <laughs> we're just wondering if you noticed that this crocodile is a magnificent animal, yet for its size, looks old. So we thought of a name. Toby, what did you want to call the crocodile? Well, should we call it Craig Franklin? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs>